Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Dai Gamma. So in the previous video, upon uh, a person's request, I derived the functional equation for the Riemann zeta function. And as I promised, this video, in this video, I'm going to talk about the analytic continuation and basically make the functional equation more compact. So please watch that previous video before coming to this one. Let's get started. Okay, so just for a quick recap now, uh, the functional equation of the Riemann zeta function, and I'm just going to state it now is pi to the negative s over 2, gamma of s over 2, zeta of s is equal to pi to the negative 1 minus s over 2, gamma of 1 minus s over 2 zeta of 1 minus s so if you see there's like um there's like a nice symmetry between uh, this s and 1 minus s if you change s to 1 minus s you'll get this and vice versa now i would like to isolate this zeta over here so we have basically pi to the negative half plus negative negative positive s over 2 divided by pi to the negative s over 2 gamma of s over 2 gamma of 1 minus s over 2 zeta of 1 minus s and now doing a small simplification pi to the s minus half divided by gamma of s over 2 gamma of 1 minus s over 2 zeta of 1 minus s that's the zeta of s okay now at this point i would like to use the reflection formula for the gamma function and i made a video on this so check that out gamma of z times gamma of 1 minus z is pi over sine of pi z so i'm going to let z equal s over 2 so gamma of s over 2 gamma of 1 minus s over 2 is equal to pi over sine of pi s over 2 so i can isolate gamma of s over 2 to be pi divided by gamma of 1 minus s over 2 sine of pi s over 2 so I can make this substitution over here in this guy. So I have zeta of s being equal to pi to the s minus half gamma of 1 minus s over 2. We will have this pi and then all of this denominator will go on top. So gamma of 1 minus s over 2 sine of pi s over 2 and zeta of 1 minus s so that is a handful now we can make some simplifications pi to the s minus 3 over 2 gamma of i can write this as half minus s over 2 gamma of 1 minus s over 2 sine of pi s over 2 zeta of 1 minus s now i would like to use a recurrence relation of the gamma function so gamma of 1 plus z is z times gamma of z and the same thing holds for even like negative values we'll have negative z times gamma of negative z so we have pi times uh, pi raised to 
एस माइनस थ्री ओवर टू गैम ऑफ हाफ माइनस एस ओवर टू एंड आई वॉन्ट राइट दिस इन यूजिंग दिस रिकरेंस फॉर्मूला सो आई हैव नेगेटिव एस ओवर टू एज बींग मल्टीप्लाइड एंड गैम ऑफ नेगेटिव एस ओवर टू साइन ऑफ पाए एस ओवर टू जीटा ऑफ वन माइनस एस नाउ वॉट एम गोन डू is use lejeunre's duplication formula which states that gamma of 2z is 2 raised to 2z minus 1 gamma of z gamma of z plus 1 half divided by square root of pi and i have made a video on this simple you know using a simple proving technique so please watch that too and uh, if i let z equal negative s over 2 and rearrange stuff i'll have square root of pi times gamma of negative s divided by 2 to the negative s minus 1 is nothing but gamma of negative s over 2 gamma of half minus s over 2 and this product is exactly what we have over here so we can make that substitution so zeta of s is now going to be we can take the negative s over to outside pi to the s minus 3 halves then uh, i can substitute square root of pi times gamma of negative s divided by 2 to the negative s minus 1 and uh, we have sin of pi s over 2 zeta of 1 minus s fair enough now i'm going to use this two to get rid of one of this guy so we have we have two to the negative s in the denominator we can take that on top and uh, make it have a positive now we have pi to the s minus 3 by 2 square root of pi is half so add that power and we have negative s times gamma of negative s sin of pi s over 2 zeta of 1 minus s now this will become 2 to the negative sorry negative will become positive 2 to the positive s uh pi Raised to s minus one. You can do the simplification now. This negative s times gamma of negative s again using recurrence relation. This guy is gamma of one minus s sine of pi s over two zeta of one minus s. All this is equal to zeta of s. This is an excellent compact. version that we would actually appreciate working with okay and uh, i'm going to actually discuss more about how this is helpful when it comes to analytic continuation in number theory that basically revolves around uh, the riemann zeta function so see you on a fresh page okay so now this is our uh, compact functional equation it's it's more like a functional functional equation but anyway so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to let s equal negative 1 um, this is just a demonstration so i have zeta of negative 1 is equal to 2 to the negative 1 pi to the negative 2 sin of negative pi over 2 gamma of 2 Uh, zeta of 2 so this becomes 1 over 2 pi square sin of pi over 2 is 1 with a negative so negative 1 uh gamma of 2 is 1 factorial so that will just go to 1 and riemann zeta of 2 is just the basel problem so sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared and this 
we can write in terms of its infinite sum definition 1 over n to the negative 1 power so this just becomes sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n is equal to minus 1 over 2 pi squared and I have made an entire playlist on the Basel problem so that's pi squared over 6 the pi squares cancel out we have negative 1 over 12 and just look at the, the left hand side here it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 going on till infinity the sum of all positive integers or all natural numbers negative 1 over 12 and you know we, we didn't even need any Bernoulli numbers like we did for one of the previous videos all we did was just extend the Riemann zeta function using this compact functional equation and that's it now it's interesting to note that if you let s equal negative 2 if you plug that in say zeta of negative 2 is 2 to the negative 2 pi to the negative 3 sine of negative pi gamma of uh, 3 zeta of 3 notice notice that sine of pi or any integral multiple of pi will always be 0 so uh, Riemann zeta of negative 2 is 0 okay so now I'm gonna put in negative 3 in so zeta of negative 3 is 2 to the negative 3 pi to the negative 4 sine of negative 3 pi over 2 gamma of 4 zeta of 4 so uh, this will be sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the negative 3 this will be 1 over 8 times pi to the 4th sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 and this negative will make it a plus gamma of 4 is 3 factorial and uh, Riemann zeta of 4 is sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 4th so this is sum from n equals 1 to infinity n cubed which is basically 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed till infinity that has a value of 1 over 8 pi to the 4th 3 factorial is 6 this also has a specific formula of pi to the 4 over 90 we can prove this using Fourier series it's actually easy these guys cancel 6 will reduce 2 and a 4 all we are left with is 1 over 120 that's for negative 3 now if we try to plug in uh, say negative 4 all you are going to have is zeta of negative 4 is 2 to the negative 4 pi to the negative 5 sine of negative 2 pi gamma of 5 zeta of 5 and sine again of any integral multiple of pi is 0 so you notice the pattern that's going on for all even negative arguments this the zeta function has a value of 0 right because 4 2 with the negative sign basically are all even negative arguments and it indeed has the value of 0 because of uh, because of the places where the sign will become 0 and these zeros so zeta of negative 2n 
equals zero where basically n belongs to uh, positive integers these zeros are what we call trivial zeros of the zeta function and Riemann actually hypothesized in, in, in a conjecture that the zeta function has zeros for all negative even arguments and also for all complex arguments having real value half so Riemann said after whom this function is named that uh, the for for the negative arguments the zeta function will only be zero for this case and this case only for these two cases so it's actually an open problem of whether Riemann was right whether these two are the only cases for when the zeta function becomes zero or are there more so proving or disproving the Riemann hypothesis is an open problem and uh, if some person were to make uh, some ground through ground bre breaking work they would be a recipient of million dollars so it's a millennium problem right so uh, you know that's the entire thing about analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function and the proving disproving the Riemann hypothesis so you know hoping I, I hope that you know after you watch this video you're inspired enough to basically I don't know give it a try or something you might even succeed I mean this looks easy for real values but when the complex numbers come that's when the real fun starts so that's why this is such a troubling problem and uh, if w one were able to solve this we would actually have greater insight into the distribution of prime numbers and it would help encode and crypt, uh, encrypt st stuff better so that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did so please like share and subscribe to my channel guys recommend me to your friends spread the word of gamma diagram in the math community in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, keep doing math. And, uh, you know, we've actually covered a nice big portion with the Riemann zeta function. So, you know, just milestone alert and uh, peace out, signing off.